Hi guys, this is Bob. I uh, bought a uh, TS120S Kenwood uh, at the Grand Rapids Ham Fest and uh, needed repair. Uh, the first thing I found was in the microphone uh, the, the, uh, there's a screw there with a little clamp on it that holds the uh, microphone cable and under that little screw was the wire, the hot wire from the microphone. Uh, this thing operated intermittently, sometimes would transmit, sometimes would not on sideband and that's because that screw was shorting out the, the microphone uh, wire. There's two wires, there's a ground and there's a hot for the microphone and both of those, a black one and a white one, were underneath that screw. The screw was kind of loose so sometimes it would work. Anyways, I took the mic apart and washed the case and put it together and separated those wires. It started working pretty good. Now I want to take the VFO out and uh, I'm going to clean the VFO and uh, lubricate it. Um, someone has already replaced the uh, little light bulb in here. The other thing I did right away, what I do with any of these rigs when I get one, and I wanted to show you guys, you see all the screws in here, and I tighten them with this little pocket Phillips screwdriver. Let me turn this off. Turn this rig, turn the radio off so that I can get in there and show you. But I just loosen them up a little bit and then snug them back down. And I use the pocket screwdriver because I don't want to tighten those screws too tight. These circuit boards are made of plastic, phenolic plastic, and you can tighten the screws down too tight and actually break the circuit board. So if you you want to, you should do that. You should tighten these up, but you want to loosen them up about a half a turn and then tighten it back up again and use a pocket screwdriver. That way you can't over tighten them. So I went through all those and I did the microphone and the things just seems to be working beautifully now. And uh, so I bought this really, really, really dirt cheap. And uh, I see one of the knobs came off here. These knobs just set on top there. I'm going to wash these anyways. But these stick up through the case top. That's your uh, controls for the VOX. Antifox and Vox gain and, and that. So uh, they just stick up through the little holes in the top. But I wanted to show you that. Tighten those screws. And do that with any rig that you are working on. And uh, this is really neat on this TS120S. You can take, now this is a three millimeter Allen wrench. You can take this VFO right out. And I'm going to take it out and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to lubricate the bearings and all the shafts, just a tiny drop of lubricant with my syringe. Here's my syringe here with the plastic protector on it. But I use this, I put a teeny drop of oil inside of each one of the controls from in the back here, you'll see there's a little hole in the side of the control. I put just a teeny bit in each one. And then I work them back and forth and back and forth about 25 times. Because all of these were intermittent. The volume would pop in and out on the receiver and the microphone gain, you'd turn it and the, and the signal would pop in and out on the, uh, I was reading it on the bird watt meter. So uh, you want to you want to do that with these. And I like plain old motor oil. This is 10 weight motor oil in here. Uh, actually 10W30 synthetic is what I'm using right now that I use in my car. And it works just great. Got this syringe at the uh, drugstore. Just went in and told the guy what I wanted. He handed me two or three. He says, these are out of date. He says, just take them. <laughs> So that was nice. Some of the customers there in the drugstore looked at me kind of funny like, what's he doing with those syringes? Anyhow, I wanted to show you how easy it is. You take these four screws out right here with a three millimeter Allen wrench and then you just pull the VFO out. Isn't that 
Isn't that nice? And I noticed too, all of these screws in this radio, this radio is very well built. It was built in 1980 and it covers six bands. It doesn't have the WARC bands, but each one of these holes for the screws has got a metal threaded insert. They don't, they don't just screw into the plastic with sheet metal screws. They use regular machine screws on this. And I think that is quality. That's really nice. You can also get right in here and put a teeny weeny bit of uh, control cleaner on these uh, rotary switches here for the band. And then you run that band switch back and forth. I did that 25 times too. And this is the... Uh, control cleaner I'm using and believe it or not they have that at uh, Walmart in the automotive department CRC QD electronic cleaner and it works really good now I spray that into a very small cup or a bottle cap I do not spray that in here because when you spray it it's going to go all over inside you don't want it all over inside so I spray it in a bottle cap and then I use a very small screwdriver like this dip it into that cleaner and then transfer it to the switch contacts which are on the other side on the back here on these switches and then I rock the switch back and forth like 25 times Of course there's three switches I do all three at once anyhow I wanted to show you how that VFO comes out I'm going to take the VFO apart now and we'll discuss that in part two so uh, 73's guys and good DX.